Today, we're going to be striking up some conversations with some artificial intelligence. Let me introduce you to ChatGPT. How are you? Welcome back once again to Sysadmin Tutorials. Today is going to be a beginner's guide to ChatGPT. We're going to be throwing a few examples back and forth, talking to the artificial intelligence. And this is going to be something that you guys can use in your everyday life. To get started, we head on over to chat.openai.com. The company OpenAI are the creators of ChatGPT. Once you are on this page, you can then go ahead and sign up for a new account. To create an account, you can simply use your email, your Google or your Microsoft account. When you proceed through this screen, you enter in a password. You'll then be required to put in your mobile or cell number. It'll send you a text code and then your account will be created. I've already created a previous account, so I'm just going to log straight in. When you log in, there are going to be a few prompts appear. The first one indicating that this is a free research preview. The free being cool, right? Secondly, our goal is to get external feedback. So the external feedback helps feed into the system and improve the system for everybody. We're going to go through that external feedback shortly. Secondly, there are some safeguards in place so that nothing misleading or malicious can come back. So just errors out. OpenAI do have AI trainers. So it does indicate there that your conversations may be reviewed by one of them. Secondly, don't share any sensitive information. I think that's pretty much common sense, but uh, they do put it up there anyway. So we'll go ahead and click on next. And this is the last pop-up indicating that the system's optimized for dialogue. So it's really like you're just talking to a human that knows absolutely everything. And you're going to see that very, very soon. So let us know if a particular response was good or it was unhelpful. So there'll be thumbs up and thumbs down for that. Lastly, you can share your feedback on their Discord server as well. So we'll go ahead, click done. And that brings us to the user interface. Let's start on over at the left hand side. Right up the top there, we have new chat and we're going to click on that very, very soon. Down the bottom, we have dark mode and that basically just changes the colors. But now we're in dark mode and I might actually just leave it in that because I do prefer it. The white is a little bit too bright for me. Next, we've got OpenAI Discord. So if you click on that, it'll take you to their Discord channel. Next, we have updates and FAQs. We click on that. That'll bring us to a page where we can read all about some release notes and FAQs. And there's a few other bits and pieces in there as well. Now on the main page, we do have three columns. First being examples, and it gives us three examples that we can use straight away. Secondly, it talks a little bit about the capabilities of ChatGPT. So it remembers what the user said earlier in the conversation. So let's say that I'm talking to you right now and I tell you a story about something. And then later on, maybe 10 minutes later, I ask you a question or a reference back to that story and you remember it because I told you, right? So ChatGPT is exactly the same. So it's going to know what you spoke about previously and it will keep that in the conversation history. Lastly, for capabilities, if you do ask anything inappropriate, it is just going to error out. On column number three, limitations. Very rarely it is going to produce incorrect information. So just be aware of that. Occasionally, it may also produce harmful or biased content. I haven't come across that yet. And usually the safeguards do kick in if it is harmful instructions. So you'll just get an error out on there. But sometimes it does come through as I guess it's still learning and training itself. So just be aware if that does come up. So now that we've given an overview of the user interface, let's start our first conversation. Now, ChatGPT is not very good with large numbers and complex calculations. It is a human language program, but so we're going to talk to it as a human. The first example that we're going to be using is write me a short story on cloud computing. Once we've entered in our request into the field there, we just go ahead, press enter. Now, the artificial intelligence is generating all of this output and it has produced a beautiful short story on cloud computing. Now that we've got our first part of the conversation, I am going to tell it to change the name of Maria to Margo. Change name of Maria to Margo. And we'll present up. And just like that, the story is rewritten, but Maria has been taken out and Margo has been replaced. OK, I've read the story and I think it's OK, but really, I feel like it should be a little bit more comical. So we can just tell ChatGPT, make this story more comical. 
and ChatGPT goes away, comes back with an output, and this story should be more comical. Now I'm pretty happy with this story, but let's say my target audience was a technical person or an engineer, and I wanna make this story more advanced. So we're simply gonna tell ChatGPT, make the story more advanced. And just like that, in a matter of seconds, we have a more advanced story. Now this story is great in English, but let's say you have some friends or relatives in another country and you wish to translate your masterpiece story here. So we can simply tell ChatGPT to translate the story to French. And there we have it, our beautiful story about cloud computing translated into French. Now I have had my wife who is French have a look at this and see how the grammar is. And it is not exactly perfect, but it's also not a bad job at all. Now we're gonna start a new conversation. And to do that at the top left-hand corner, we're gonna click new chat. Our next conversation is gonna be around VMware. So I'm gonna type in here, what is VMware ESXi? The response comes back and tells me all about what VMware ESXi is. Now let's say I'm not from a VMware background and I'm not actually even technical, so I don't understand what a lot of these words are. I can simply ask ChatGPT to generate a new response and to make it more simple for me. To do that, I'm just gonna ask it, make the response easier to understand. And just like that, ChatGPT has generated a more simple response. Now I'm gonna ask, what is the latest release of VMware ESXi? As you can see from that response, ChatGPT has a knowledge cutoff of 2021. So at that time, VMware ESXi 7 was the latest release. Now I wanna know how do I configure VMware ESXi? So I'm just gonna ask it simply that. The response gives a high level bunch of steps that are required to configure ESXi. Let's say I'm comfortable with step one and two, and I wanna know a little bit more information about step three. So I can just ask ChatGPT to tell me more about step three. It's now generated a much more detailed response on configuring virtual networking in ESXi. As I mentioned previously, you have these thumbs up and thumbs down buttons just on the right hand side of the response. So if you're happy with this response, you can give a thumbs up. However, if it's generated something that you're not happy with, you can then just go ahead and click on the thumbs down. I'm quite happy with this response, so I'm just gonna give it a thumbs up. And I'll just write there, happy with this response. And we'll submit that feedback. We're now gonna ask ChatGPT, what are the top three most popular programming languages? Let's say I'm an absolute beginner with Python. I've got no experience at all. However, I just wanna see a little beginner's code example. I can simply type in here, show me a beginner's code example for Python. And almost instantly up on screen, it produced a Python example of print hello world. You then have that little description underneath saying that this program outputs the string hello world to the console. Let's get a little bit more advanced with Python and really put ChatGPT to the test. I'm gonna be asking ChatGPT to generate a multiple choice Python game on cloud computing. Hit enter. Up on screen is all of the code that you require to produce this small multiple choice game. It's almost finished here. And we can simply copy and paste this into our Python program, run it, and you'll have a small Python game on cloud computing. Underneath the code, it gives a description about what the game is and how to play it. Let's say I didn't have Python installed though, and I had Java. We're gonna ask ChatGPT to regenerate the same code, but this time in Java. Let's press enter. And you can do this with almost any programming language. You can even take code that you've written yourself, paste it into this, press enter, let the system absorb it, and then ask it to regenerate that code into another programming language. If you're looking to control VMware products with a programming language, I've got this masterclass on VMware Power CLI. Go check it out and it'll take you from zero to hero. For our last conversation, we are gonna keep this one a little bit lighthearted. So we're gonna go back to new chat 
and down in the field here we are going to ask it to generate us a recipe or something that we can eat for lunch that's high in protein and low in fat let's see what it comes back with it's come back with a grilled chicken salad which is a pretty good option and here we have the recipe step by step everything that you need to create this super healthy grilled chicken salad before you create it you are going to need the ingredients so we're going to need to go to the shop we're going to ask ChatGPT to generate us a shopping list based on this recipe generate a shopping list for me here's my shopping list i can write this down in my notepad can take a photo with my phone head on over to the shops grab all these ingredients and make my beautiful grilled healthy chicken salad for lunch as you can see ChatGPT is pretty amazing with its artificial intelligence and machine learning every day it keeps getting fed new information and responses and feedback from people so it's just continually evolving we're going to wrap this episode up right now if you did enjoy this content you guys know what to do thumbs up subscribe all that good stuff but until next time, take care, and we'll see you again in the next video. Ciao for now. Yeah.